Hello everyone, I'm Isaac, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a video by Cross-Examined called Why Would God Make Me a Lesbian? For those of you who don't know, Cross-Examined is a Christian apologetics ministry run by a guy named Frank Turek, who does most of the actual apologetic work. So without further ado, let us begin. You mentioned the acorn analogy, that an acorn mm -hmm. is, pre is programmed to grow up into a tree. Yes. Um, if if things are directed how God wanted them, then why did he direct me to love women as mm -hmm. one loves men? Mm -hmm. Well, the question might be, how do you know God directed you to do that, right? And there are a lot of things that go on in this world that all of us have. All of us have certain orientations to things we ought not do according to God but yet we still do them. That's why we live with a fallen nature, right? Well, first off, I just want to say that this girl is tremendously brave to get up in front of such a hostile environment and challenge Frank Turek's homophobia like that. We need more people like her that are willing to challenge bigots like Frank Turek. And to address Frank's point, the orientations, as you would call it, are not the same thing as sexual orientation. For one, sexual orientation is a fixed part of someone's core identity, and any attempt to change it is not only ineffective, but also leads to psychological and emotional harm. Whereas resisting urges brought on by anger or greed can not only be effective at changing the individual, but has no harm on the individual, and in fact, if anything, has positive effects. Furthermore, forcing a gay person into celibacy has been shown to have damaging psychological effects on the individual, and forcing them into a heterosexual marriage has similarly damaging effects, but also comes with a nearly 70% divorce rate, meaning that not only is their spouse harmed by the fact that they simply could not be there for them in the same way a heterosexual spouse could, but now any children who, that have been caught up in this mess are now going to have to endure the pain of what is usually a very messy divorce. And we haven't even started on how non-acceptance of LGBT plus people contributes to suicide, drug use, and a whole host of other problems. In Romans 13.10, the Bible says, love does no harm to a neighbor. So this begs the question, how can what you were saying here be of a God that is the embodiment of love, considering everything I have just laid out here? All of us have a fallen nature. Um, should we expect that in this fallen world that God would give us a nature that wasn't fallen? No. No? So we're all struggling with sin. That's why we need a Savior. Because everyone, you and me and everyone in this room, needs the sacrifice that Christ provided. Regardless of what our feelings are, regardless of which way we're directed, based on nature or nurture, and as you know, there's a big debate over how much is nature, how much is nurture, uh, for all of our sexual orientations. But are my feelings inherently wrong to have? Are feelings inherently wrong to have? I don't think there's a way you can be blamed for having feelings. Look, I have feelings all day that I ought not act on, and sometimes I fail. But it's not the feelings that are the issue, it's the action that flows from them. Actually, though, if you look at what Jesus said, when you, when you look at Matthew chapter 5, Jesus actually ratchets, ratchets up the standard. He says if you're just angry with your brother, you're guilty. Well, thanks, Jesus. I don't have a prayer of living up to that, and I don't. He says be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I can't do that. You can't do that. Nobody in this room can do that. Who can do it? Only he can. That's why we need him. Did you see what he just did there? He started out by saying she could not be held responsible for what she's feeling, which I'm pretty sure at this point I've demonstrated to still be an extremely harmful, but then immediately backpedals and essentially says she is wrong for being gay, even though he admitted earlier that homosexuality is, in some large part, entirely natural. She is wrong for being who she is, despite not choosing it or being able to change it. Now, the comment section of this video is filled with people complimenting on how well Frank handled the questions and how calmly and kindly he handled the situation. However, as someone who has told these same lies in the same way that Frank Turek told them by my family, that doesn't make it better. If anything, it only makes it worse and all the more emotionally and psychologically damaging. The fact is, no matter how calmly or kindly you espouse bigotry like this, it will still drive people to dark places, because telling people that they are somehow inherently wrong is never going to do anything other than harm. So we all have these struggles, Sammy. I have struggles, you have struggles. But for us to say that God's at fault for these struggles, no, God's not at fault for the struggles. I don't believe that. Right. You don't believe what? I don't believe that he's at fault. I think we right. all make mistakes, but I don't think something so, like, something like love that's supposedly pure 
it can be pure in the way that a man loves a woman or a man loves a man or a woman loves a woman. Who's to say that the way you love your wife mm -hmm. is any different from the way I'm going to love someone in the future, whether it be a man or a woman? Well, it's not me to say anything because I'm not the moral arbiter of the universe. That's true. Right? So I'm, I, I don't decide right and wrong. This is why when people come to me and say, well, don't impose your morality on me, like I said earlier, I said, this isn't my morality. I didn't make any of this up. In fact, there were things I wish were different, but I'm not the general manager of the universe. I'm not God. You may not be the moral arbiter of the universe, but you are claiming to speak for it. That's literally what your entire fucking apologetics ministry is. And you are deciding that homosexuality is wrong, not because the Bible says so, but because that's what you think the Bible says, as there are interpretations of the Bible that don't condemn homosexuality. So stop pretending that you're not speaking from your own moral position on the issue to save face. Just be honest with your own beliefs. So, I guess back to your, your question, you'd have to define exactly what you mean by love. What, is, what does love mean? Can you care for somebody of the same sex? Of course you can. I do. The question is, should you go further than that into some sort of romantic relationship? That's the question. What you just asked implies that same-sex relationships are somehow inferior to opposite-sex relationships, an assertion that has no basis in fact whatsoever. There is no evidence whatsoever that homosexuality is any way inferior to heterosexuality. I think you should. Well, okay, you can take that. You're, it's a free country. But scripturally, if you believe in the scriptures and if you believe in natural law... Define natural law. Natural law is the idea that everybody intuitively understands moral right and wrong on the big issues. That there's a natural design to us, there's a natural design to the universe that we're intended to go in a, a particular direction and that we know we're supposed to shun evil and we're supposed to seek the good. So... And you think that natural law was founded by like Christianity. No, 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 no. It existed long before Christianity. That's Founded why, for example, Noah, the entire generation of Noah was judged. They didn't have any scripture, they didn't have any Bible, but God expected them to know basic right and wrong because he had written it on their hearts. So you don't need the Bible to know basic right and wrong. Everyone already knows it. Now we can suppress it, we can reject it, we can go our own way, and all of us do on occasion, but it's still there. The problem with your assertion that natural law doesn't come from Christianity is that you cite an event that we know didn't happen scientifically and was pulled from your very holy book. Meanwhile, in the world of actual history, there has never been any kind of long-standing ban or societal disapproval of homosexuality within most cultures throughout history, until after colonialization. To give some examples, Japan historically has been very accepting of homosexuality and only banned the practice to appease Western powers. Greece and Rome were also very accepting of homosexuality. And for some idiot types in the comments section, The fall of the Roman Empire was caused by the gays you call me Liptardkak. Rome fell well after it became predominantly Christian and the Theodonetian Code, which formerly banned homosexuality, was implemented. Furthermore, if you really believe in the Bible and natural law, then why are you opposed to slavery? After all, Leviticus 25, 44-46 outlines exactly how to implement chattel slavery, and most cultures have it historically had some form of slavery up till less than 100 years ago. However, you don't seem to apply natural laws to this area, which kind of makes it seem that when you're talking about natural law, that you were talking utter shit. In any case, that's the end of the video, and honestly, I hope that Frank is challenged a lot more by brave people like this girl in this video, because this kind of homophobia needs to be exposed, and the more people ask him these questions, the more likely they are to stump him. And the more people it is done in front of, the more people that will begin to realize that their homophobia is irrational and causing real harm. In any case, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like, subscribe for more content, and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mcgay1999 to keep up with channel-related content and my ever-growing meme collection. In any case, may the rest of your day be free of homophobic assholes, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>